Hey guys, Vincent here, and this is the Binet 9805. <laughs> First of all, I am so sorry that it took me that long to produce this episode. I really wanted to take my time with the Binet 9805 since I knew a lot of guys were very interested in this Binet. Then I got sick for almost two weeks and this delayed the production even further. But now I'm alright again and with this out of the way, we can finally start with the episode. Enjoy! The Binet 9805 is a sword or machete style Binet with a wooden grip. The original 9805 had a sawback blade, but later variants came with a regular blade as well. It is produced to go alongside with the carbine and the rifle 98, and therefore it has the Mauser single point mounting mechanism. The sheath was made out of leather, but then later changed during the First World War due to leather shortages into an all steel sheath construction. The overall length of the 9805 is 500 mm. The blade itself is 370 mm long, between 25 and 32 mm wide and 6 mm thick. Without the sheath, the bayonet weighs around 545 grams. The bayonet 98 was the last variant in the German army of the Faschine knife, a mix between weapon and tool for pioneers and artillery units used to fortify positions. When the Mauser Rifle 98 was introduced in 1898, it took the regular Pioneer Battalions four years until they got their own bayonet. In 1902, the Prussian army adopted the bayonet 9802. It was a heavy weapon with an oppressive sawback that could be fixed to rifle or carbine 98. If you want more details on this particular weapon, you can see my episode number 4. Link is in the description. Only three years later, in 1905, the army realized that the Binet 9802 was too heavy and too clumsy to be useful. Trials began and in early 1906, the first troops got their hands on the now new Binet 9805. Like its predecessor, the 9802, the original Binet 9805 was always produced with a sawback blade. The sawback was looked at as an essential tool for the pioneers to use in the field. And since the 9805 was originally only used for pioneer troops, there was no need for a non sawback variant. The example from my collection you can see here is one of those original Binet 9805s. It has the earliest property stamp possible, W06 for the year 1906, and it is marked to a pioneer battalion. In November 1909, the Binet 9805 would also be given to other soldiers, such as the railway units, field artillery or the telegraph troops. The decision was made to equip these railway units and telegraph units with a new variant of the 9805. This time there was no sawback, since it was seemed unnecessary and even potentially dangerous for the user himself. The rest of the bayonet and the sheath would, however, stay completely the same. And again, this is one of the first Binet 9805 without the Sorbeck. It is marked to a telegraph unit and the property stamp dates to the year 1908, which is indicated by the stamp W08. In 1914 the world would change forever when the assassination of the Austro-Hungarian Crown Prince started the First World War. The Imperial German Infantry started the war with the Bayonet 98 new pattern as their standard infantry bayonet for their Mauser Rifle 98. It was a long and thin bladed weapon that was not suited for the trench warfare to come. In late 1914 the German army started looking for a replacement for their Bayonet 98. It was quickly decided that the Bayonet 9805 should be the new bayonet for the German frontline soldier. It was much shorter more rugged and could be used as a tool to help digging the trenches that would become the symbol of the First World War. In 1915 the decision to replace the Binet 98 with the Binet 9805 was implemented. This meant production stop for the Binet 98 
in full-on production for the Bionet 9805. Due to leather shortages during the war, the Bionet 9805 got a new steel sheath and some other changes were made to help speed up the production. As you can see here, the two other changes that were done to the Bionet 9805 during the First World War are first, the removal of these, let's call them ears, or just the barrel rest. These were ground down to be now just a little round shape in the handguard. The second change was the installation of a steel plate on the back of the grip. This was done to protect the wooden grip pieces from the muzzle flash of the rifle. You can see here in a moment why this was important during the First World War. As demonstrated in the video, there is no problem when fixing the two variants onto the Rifle 98. The muzzle ends behind the grip and only the steel blade would get blasted with hot gas. But during the war, the Carbine 98 or Carbine 98 AZ started to play a bigger role. The new Sturmbataillone or Storm Battalions were issued with this smaller and handier version of the Rifle 98. One of the distinctive features of the Carbine 98 is the short barrel with a bayonet lock directly under the muzzle. With more and more carbines in frontline service, the bayonets needed the new modification to stay usable. And with all these three changes, the ground down muzzle ears, the flash guard and the steel scabbard, the new variant finally got a name. The Bionet 9805 New Pattern. The 9805 New Pattern was produced from 1915 until 1918, when the war ended. As with many other German bayonets, 6 out of every 100 bayonets were produced with a Sorbeck, and this wasn't different for the Bionet 9805 new pattern. In December 1917 there was an order given to remove these Sorbecks from the bayonets for the infantry. Pioneer battalions got to keep their Sorbeck bayonets until the end of the war. There is a lot of myth surrounding the German Sorbeck bayonet in the First World War, and I will make a separate video about this topic. But since the 9805 with the Sorbeck is one of the most iconic German Sorbeck bayonets, I thought I would mention it here shortly. Due to its distinctive blade shape, the bayonet 9805 new pattern would be called the Butcher Blade by the English speaking soldiers, and it would become one of the most iconic bayonets. And now it's time for us to check the four different types of markings you can find on an Imperial German bayonet. The marking of the manufacturer, the proof marks, the property stamp and the unit markings. The manufacturer is in this case the Waffenfabrik Mauser AG Oberndorf AN, meaning Weapons Fabrik Mauser in the city of Oberndorf, which is located at the river Neckar. Interestingly, the bayonet sheath made by Mauser were marked as well, and this is the only case that the producer is stamped on the bayonet sheath that I know of. Since this is a pretty beat up example of an S9805 new pattern, you can't see the proof marks anymore. But this was the bayonet I had, and I wanted to pick up a kind of realistic looking bayonet. Most of you guys will have something like this, and not a shiny and new looking piece, so I thought mine would fit into the context of this video. I mean, it survived the Great War and is now over 100 years old. It's okay to look a bit rough after this many years, don't you think? The property stamp is W16 for Kaiser Wilhelm II and the year 1916. S9805 old pattern bayonets can be found from W06 until W15. S9805 new pattern bayonets are ranging from W15 until W18. And since this is a wartime production bayonet and unit marking officially stopped when the war broke out, it is completely normal to find no unit markings on this S9805. And if you are interested in unit markings, you have already seen two different unit markings earlier in the video. Alright guys, we are finally at the end of this video. I had a blast producing it. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions or anything else I can help you with, uh, please leave a comment down below. And this leaves me with nothing else to say but I will see you guys in the next video.